gameplay actually happens. So. Yeah, so I think a big part of this is going to be how Kamex is actually going to be able to close out stocks early and often. What an aggressive Ooh. jump, though, from the using the car as the airspeed. I will also say that despite the fact that, you know, we, we you know, laud the praises of high damage Lucario, VD plays no damage Lucario really well. I mean, look at this, 69% completely uncontested. That's the first time he's gotten hit. This character, even without Aura, still has some nice low percent combos and still has fantastic movement options. Now look at this, 82%. I mean, now you can kill with... I was going to say F Smash, but Vivi said it for me. Beautiful stuff. I mean, Vivi loves to throw out that F Smash because it just puts so much fear in the opponent. It's very much, uh, there's very little reason to not go for it in many scenarios. Ooh. You know what maybe this was? Maybe Cam calculated, took all of this damage on purpose at the beginning of the game, using his own rage to perhaps take an early stop. Yeah, that is one thing when gain low percent combo by Lucario. You almost don't even mind it too much because, like, they're not going to be able to die until that aura comes in. And wow, after getting like <laughs> 0 to 70, barely took any more percent and taking the stock with a really solid S match read. I'm sorry, who's the who's the blue mammal that uh, kills at high percents again? I think it's, I think it's a hedgehog. <laughs> this is actually shocking. The way that Kamix was playing and now the fact that Lucario is at lower percent once more means that he can be more comfortable just playing the way he wants to in terms of turning on the aggression, you know, like a, toggling a switch. Yeah, Camus, his... Camus is playing shockingly aggressive right now, really. Especially, I think, with, with the confidence in his movement, with that lead, but what does it matter? So, so I was actually just overhearing a conversation that when Sonic whiffs that uh, that spin, the, the homing attack, and he lands into the stage, he legs. has an eternity of end yep. lag. And I think Vivi's definitely aware of that with, like, uh, a lot of things players do is try to time a spot dodge so that he bonks into the ground and then has to land. Uh, there's there's a few ways to counterplay it, but it's always kind of hard to like be ready for it in that situation. That could have been the stock. Oh, that was actually so good! He went for a higher aura sphere, and Kamex recognized that, and then he went for the charge spin dash right underneath it, catching the landing. And now with this sizable lead, let's see what Kamex can do with it. We're not at the sort of, the game has been going too fast. He's been playing too aggressive that he can really play to a timeout. And yeah, he's not even hes not even putting the brakes on at all. Look at this, continuously finding openings, getting damage, another hit, already 48% dished out onto Vivi, whereas Kamix is looking pretty healthy at only 100. Yeah, and taking that stock with that fair was so vital. Like it could have been, this could have been such a different game if he didn't get that read. But look at what Kamix is able to do with the lead. Oh man, this could this could be a two stock right now. The way Kamix is playing, it could be. Also, Kamix could die twice in the next 30 seconds. Very true. Yeah, you never feel comfortable against Lucario, and if you do, you're gonna die for it. So Kamix, I'm sure, knows the risk that he's in. Did you see that? The aura sphere charge was so big that it somehow hit the homing attack coming in from the front. And Lucario's airspeed coming in right there. Kamex tried to like jump in uh, the general space near ledge. Lucario is so f has such fast airspeed that he's able to just float past it and go back on the stage safely. Ooh, beautifully timed. Spin dash this. <laughs> it's so big. And now Vivi had a that the buff dash attack. I'm not sure if it was important right there, but I do know that they buffed that move. They made its. Uh, they made the sweet spot bigger, and they made the sweet spot last longer. Noah move did not need buffs. Sonic's back here. Beautifully placed stuff right there from Kamix. He's playing hot right now. He's playing like I want another top three at Zeno. Yeah, that's been consistently a way that he's able to close out games. He hits an opponent, and then recognizing their fear when they try to make it back down to the ground, that's when he throws out the back air. So we now have currently up 1-0. Kamex just needs one more game in order to take this. And I'm pretty sure this is a good matchup for Lucario. If I remember correctly, um, it's it's the fact that Kamex is playing this so well at this moment. I think it speaks to his growth as a player, as to his potential as he continues to improve, not only in this season, but in future seasons as well. 
Now, that being said, I don't want to discount Vivi too much. Vivi is a fantastic player. And this time around, oh no, Kamex is hitting him. Why would you do that? I That's think rookie mistake. Yeah, I think Kamex is playing this so aggressively because the more time you let Vivi live, <laughs> that was weird. <laughs> Why is that glitch existed yeah. since, like, Melee? Yeah, it, it, I feel like it's intentional at this point. But um, back to what I was saying, the more time you let Vivi live at high percents, the more opportunities can occur for you to get janked, for you to get really um, kill, killed really early with Aura Lucario. So I think he doesn't want to really play this campy spin dash game because if you're just charging spin dash, that's free time for Lucario to charge Aura Sphere. So um, it's almost like the traditional Sonic role is reversed in this matchup where you want to use your speed to rush down instead of camp. Another thing is I'm loving the way that Kamex is using the platforms, recognizing that he can't just go in a straight line running directly at BB. Instead, hanging out on the platforms, making it a little bit more of a guessing game. I like sure. that. I like sure. that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, the thing is, at, at that point, the risk of losing your stock is so big. Like, if you lose your stock before he does, oh no, you are now, not only do you have to take his stock, but he's also a max rage Lucario that can kill you in like three hits. So taking a stock trade is really, honestly, pretty good. I, I think it also just, it sends a bit of a message, you know, because like, that could have not hit, and it would have just been a loss of a stock, but oh my oh, god. regrettable. That's the second time we've seen a stock taken like that. The spin, the homing, oh, well, 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 sure, okay. That is so, such a lucky break for Kamex right there. That could have easily been a two stock with that much aura on Lucario, but very fortunate. <laughs> it's stuff. like, hey, Sonic, you want to watch me do a backflip? Oh, then awesome. He just, just does a backflip off stage. And right here, honestly, essentially even, um, this nice bit of aura is where Lucario can start cooking. I'm, I'm surprised he didn't get punished for that one. That homing attack has been pretty consistently... Uh, you know, BB's been putting on a lot of hurt. For oh my god, he's dead. He's dead! That was two F smashes around the 50 to 70 range. That is a frustrating way to lose if you're Kamex. And that wasn't even high percent Lucario. Both of, those, both of those stocks he took were like middling percent. Just hit him with the forward smash. Yeah, you need very little aura for that forward smash to start just being ridiculous. <laughs> 58% and Sonic's not light or anything. Sonic's a solid midweight and that just blew him up. I think, yeah, if you're Kamex. Why does Sonic make the surprised Pikachu face when he gets hit? Uh, it's his eyes, really. It's hard for him to not look surprised <laughs> that much. This is the mouth open, man. Anyway, nice back and forth we're having. Game one going to Kamex pretty convincingly. Game two going to VV just the same. So as this game three progresses, let's see how things are going to fare. Now Kamex is already hitting him, which is a mistake. He won game one because he got comboed to 60 at the beginning of the game. So this time the fact he's hitting VB first is, uh, I don't know how that's going to work out. Well. Yeah, very sloppy play right here, hitting VB. It's all, um, one thing, VB seems to have such, such a read on Kamex's spin dashes at this point. Even at low percents right there, he was able to get like a spot dodge and roll and totally avoid it. Uh, not spin dashes, sorry, homing attacks. Um, so, uh, just, I think BB's really starting to get this adaptation going. Kamex is the name of the game, and it's going to be avoiding these uh, really early kills with this F smash or with like a confirm off of like dare or anything. So, it's, it's just going to have to be super safe play, and that, that almost looks death. You know, it's also something we haven't really seen uh, be a factor yet, but um, the charging of the Aura Sphere. That's a combo starter that could lead into kills really reliably at higher percents. Yeah, I feel like Kamex has been playing so like anti Aura Sphere that now that he's like started to switch it up, he wasn't really ready for it. But this this first stock can be so vital. Ooh, some kooky things happened on the ground right there. But at this point, this is actually looking really dangerous for both players. A grab is one of one Lucario's only options that can't get a kill at this point, and he's already landed two of them. How is he arriving at 141? Good landing roll right there. I feel like Eevee was expecting something aggressive considering there was no jump left, but damage is empty landing. 
And next hit will be such a decider. And it's going to go to Vivi. That stock being taken finally by the Aura Sphere. And now if you're Kamex, this is so scary. You need to take this stock very quickly. But getting hit once will lead to so much damage. Because each of Lucario's moves does like 50% at this point. I'm pretty sure. Oh, so huge. Whoever got that next big opening there could have been the difference from this being like a five-minute game or ending in the next 30 seconds. Um, so really important that you stop that 150 or Lucario. <gasps> Ooh, the little... Oh, where are you going, buddy? Feeling, feeling confident. And that honestly was pretty close to hitting, so I don't totally blame him. I mean, I will say that if you're able to kill Lucario at low percents, if the opportunity, even if it's a small chance, I think it is worth going for it. Oh, good wait right there. I wonder if um, he was not... I wonder if he had a read on that F-Smash. That neutral air is so safe, and we're seeing Kamix use it quite a bit on Vivi, especially when he's shielding right in his face so comfortably. Oh, at this point... 114% on VV. Once more, Kamek has to think about how he's going to be getting this kill. Last time he lived to 150. I would be surprised if that happens again, though. That Nair not able to kill off the top very early. Ooh, and that weak hit back here. Forward what tilt. a call out. Knowing that that angle, VV was going to be going high and timing that forward tilt perfect, beautifully. That, that could be the set right there, if, if Kamex can get a bit of a uh, percent lead. But well, let's see. Let's you know, see. this is this is the sort of thing where if you... I can't believe you're going to die. Wow. Um, uh, if you're VV, it's going to be hard to take this stock. You know, you are now a no-damage Lucario. I think the, uh, the Anubis mechanic helps you out a little bit in that regard. But, hey, actually, never mind. It's just going to be, you know, playing well and taking the back air at 40. At this point, once more, a completely even game in game three between these two players. This is yeah. the first. This is like the first really what really feels like an even game so far. Yeah, no, like one big early kill from either players. Just uh, back and forth with these combos. It's, it feels like um that could have been bad with VV losing that stock, but they honestly played near perfect um, with <gasps> no aura. He got that ledge slip and Kamek's missing the tech. That could have been huge. Have he gotten like jab reset? I don't, can Lucario jab reset with his jab? Uh, I think so. Seems like, maybe not, actually. Maybe not. Uh, but regardless, Kamek's at this point is at a 56%. We've seen him die to F Smash here before. But instead, I think he's going for a much more, you know, you were saying before how, oh, you know, he's been very aggressive. Now it feels like he's more comfortable, you know, opting to hang back and take space and it makes sense because we are also at the point where two minutes on the clock if he manages to get a lead with some damage that could oh that could be a viable you know win condition for him and what good patience for Kamex right there Vivi throwing out these bears throwing out smash attacks if Kamex just holds in once it would hit and end the game and end the set but he's been so patient able to stay still and um, not run into anything oh, that could have been big the disadvantage from Kamex is really nice right now. But disadvantage doesn't matter that much if you're not able to actually finally get a hit of your own to contest. Oh, that trade, it, it's going to be all right. But I think he's looking for some really meaningful hit here. Like a back hit, but not enough to do it. He does have this percent lead now. If he really wants to play patient, he could. But it's dangerous to hang back too far when Laura, Lucario's aura spheres are that big. Oh, what a parry. Yeah, this is... Camping out right here means this is like time for Lucario to charge many aura spheres. Oh my gosh. <laughs> How is he not hitting any of these? These players, Campus's palms have got to be so sweaty right now. I I'm getting sweaty palms and uh, I'm just watching. <gasps> oh, no what? way. What oh, even was that? That was a B reverse aura sphere hitting Sonic in his head. That looks very bizarre. That was that was so strange and definitely Kamex not expecting it. That's actually I don't think that's an option we've seen really from VV. Just like uh, you landing like that. a landing aura sphere like that. Wait, he went for this up air and then yeah, yeah, wow. Wait, like can we can we go back just a little bit because I want to take a look at what I think Kamex tried to hook pick out an option here. Yeah, went for that up air. 
Oh. Charge the forward smash. I'm not sure what he was expecting in that situation. Maybe it I think he was down. Yeah, or something. Or he was just expecting him to land in front, not rise up with that up air. And that, you know, displacement is what worked out really well for uh, VP. Kamek's doing a fantastic run, but it ends at fourth, and VP's going to be the one moving on into losers' finals, where now 